Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we look at how we can consume ASP.NET Core Web API service with WPF application or Windows Presentation Foundation application using the Visual Studio 2019. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So let's get to it then. So what is really a web API? So web API is an application programming interface for either a web server or the web browser. And ASP.NET Core Web API is just a framework for building HTTP services that can be accessed by any client, including browsers, mobile devices, etc. It is also an ideal platform for building a RESTful applications on the .NET Core stack. So, ASP.NET Core or WPF or WPF Windows Presentation Foundation is a UI framework that creates desktop clients applications for Windows. So enough of all of this, load. let's get to it properly in the code side. So as you can see here now, I've actually opened a Visual Studio 2019. And if you're watching from the previous video, which I will leave the link below, you, you can see that I've actually created a, a web API client using the uh, console app. And then I've actually created a, the standard web API server or service. So from the previous video, if we may recall, uh, if we come inside uh, the web API server and inside the controllers folder, we open the controller, um, the value controller.cs. So as you can see here now, we've got one get method that returns an array of string. Yeah, so what we do is we're actually going to return just a normal string. So we remove the array, right? So this is what we're actually going to return. So we're just going to write um, server time. And this is what we're actually going to put. We're just going to put the current server time. So it's the daytime.utc now. And then we're just going to print out the, the, the full shot date version of our daytime. Yeah, so this is what we're actually going to do with the values controller, right? So we come inside. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so what we do is obviously we right click our solution and we add a new project. And of course, it will be a C sharp language. So we select the C sharp and we type in a WPF app. WPF. So we, we should get it on the first result. So it's a WPF application. This is a project for creating a .NET call WPF application. So we click on the next. And here we can actually configure our project details. But we're not going to do that as it's not really relevant for this video. And we can also set our target framework for this project. But we're actually going to leave it as a, at the current target, which is the .NET 5.0. So we're just going to click on the create. So right now we've got a, we've got ASP.NET Core WPF app created. So what we do next is we right click the project, right click the project, and I mean right click the solution, and um, set startup project. So as you can see here, now we've already se selected a multiple startup project. If you're actually watching from the previous video. So here, what we do is we set we set the WPF app also to start. So we apply changes and we click OK. So we jump straight in, inside our WPF um, the XAML main window XAML. So we've got the code behind to be the main window .xaml .cs. So we we open the XAML file and we add a stack panel. stack panel to it and we set the orientation to be vertical and we set the vertical alignment to be center as well so here we're just going to put two things the first bit is we're just going to put a button and we, we set some elements so the name of the button 
will be we're just gonna we're just gonna we're not gonna put in a name we're just gonna leave it as it is so we're just gonna set just the phone size so we're gonna set the phone size to we're just gonna put 26 uh, vertical alignment to be center horizontal alignment to be center as well so the content we're just gonna say click me that's that's all we're gonna do for the button for now so the next is of course we're just gonna add a label And we'll give the label a name. So the name of the label, we're just gonna call it message. And the content, we're just gonna say server message here. So vertical alignment, we're gonna set that to center. And the horizontal alignment to center. And the font size, we're gonna set that to 26. So this is all we're gonna do for the for this pit. So now as you can see, uh, we've only got the label and the button inside. So we click on the button, and we click on this event side here. So we we double click the click event handler. So we sh we should get the method created for us here. So inside the the, the private, we add async to it. Yeah. So here, what we do is we start with the using. We're gonna use an HTTP client, and we call it client, and we get the new. We instantiate it. So the HTTP client is under system.net.http. So once we click on that, this. The error will be resolved so we initialize another variable we call it response and this will be we await um, the client dot get async so if you follow me from the previous video we come inside the, the console app and we actually copy the URI for the for the service and we come inside there we, we actually paste it inside here so the next bit of course is we actually type response that we ensure there is a success with our query or our, our request and then we check if uh, the response is successful then this is what we would do otherwise this is what we do so this bit here we set the message the label we change the content to so if there's an error with the query this is this is what we're actually going to do so we're just going to write server error code so we put the response dot status code so we come back inside the if statement so if that we get we get a, the, the, the correct response this is what we're going to do we, we're just going to put the message we're just going to display the message so the content of the message will be await response dot content dot read as string async so this all that is needed to actually make a, a request to the uh, ASP.NET called web API service so we're just gonna run it to see what actually comes out of it right so we click on the start or F5 
since we've actually set it into um, a multiple RAM so we've actually got a console started first so we've got the service so we should get the server time displayed here so as you can see here we've got the server time and then the day time whatever so once we actually click on the enter for the console we should get the service as you can see we've got a return value and then we should try we're going to try our WPF so we click enter as you can see we've got the service return the value so as you can see here now it's not really difficult so I'm just gonna leave the video here for time reason and I hope you're actually going to build on your knowledge and actually actually explore this further so once again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do because I've got a lot of videos coming up and I hope you have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Bless and stay in peace. Bye bye.